I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. But this is not the only side of the story. It's too easy to overlook Bathsheba and forget that her story doesn't end with the manipulative and tragic events that David put her through. Her story has more honor to it than many might expect. This is the story of Bathsheba, Queen Mother of Israel. Bathsheba was a noblewoman, a member of the courtly family during the reign of David, the second king of Israel. Her husband, Uriah, was a member of David's royal guard, a friend in his inner circle. One spring, when Uriah set out with the Israelite army to go to war, King David opted to stay home instead of leading his troops out on the battlefield. This was the first step in the wrong direction. Bathsheba was in the courtyard of her family home one night, Thinking the walls of the courtyard would provide her privacy, Bathsheba took a ritual purification bath, part of the religious requirements of the Torah. Little did she know that King David, who was strolling out on the roof of his palace, had noticed her from above the walls of her home. Seemingly out of nowhere, royal messengers from King David showed up at her house and brought her to the king's palace. She, being a woman in Israelite society, didn't have much power to negotiate with, and had little choice but to go along with David's sexual advances. David got what he wanted out of her and sent her home. But she came home only to realize a short while later that David had gotten her pregnant. When she sent him a message to inform him, David created an elaborate cover-up plot. He arranged to have Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, killed on the battlefield but made it look like an accident. Heartbroken, Bathsheba mourned the death of her husband until David brought her back into the palace again, this time to marry her. His attempt at a cover-up almost worked, but God sent the prophet Nathan to confront David. The evil and heartbreak that David had caused ultimately came back to him when the child Bathsheba had given birth to died even too soon for them to give him a name. Bathsheba mourned again. She did what she could to find comfort in this new life she had not chosen, to make the best of her time in the palace. After the child who died, she and David had more children, four in total. Bathsheba named one of her sons Nathan in honor of the prophet who had advocated for her in her darkest hour. But the firstborn and most famous of all these children was Solomon. In the meantime, David's family descended into chaos. Several of his other children died as direct and indirect results of his actions. David lived out his days carrying the responsibilities of the throne and the guilt of his sin. As he aged, he became frail and sickly. Then his son Adoniah began plotting to make himself king of Israel once his father died, in spite of David's right as king to name his successor. Nathan and Bathsheba, still friends after many years, stepped forward to set things right. They approached David and told him Adoniah was trying to claim the throne. David made a promise to Bathsheba that he would declare her son, Solomon, to be the rightful king after him. Now we don't know exactly how Bathsheba felt about living in the palace for so many years with a man who had harmed her in so many ways. She seems to have made the best of a bad situation where she had little to no power. We can only guess how uncomfortable she may have felt with her circumstances. But we do know that one day, she walked into the throne room of the King of Israel and no longer saw David, but the son of David, her son, Solomon. She watched this king stand up from his throne and bow down to her. She watched as he installed a second throne beside his own, and she, Bathsheba, sat down as Queen Mother of Israel, the most honorable woman in the land. 